You're listening to the Major Pod Network, the only place where your favorite toy store, card shop, arcade, theme park, and arena are all on the same block. Scratch that major itch. This is Tony Chimmel, and I'd like to introduce the hosts of the Game Marks Podcast, George Feast and Johnny Clash. Welcome to the Game Marks Podcast, presented by the Major Pod Network. I am Mr. Anything is Feasible, George Feast. And I'm the man they call Johnny Clash, and today we are finally playing TNA Impact. How is this game going to hold up? Will we give it a play it forever? Woo! Or a future endeavor? You're fired! And... Please subscribe and leave a five-star review for this podcast on both Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And follow us on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. And don't forget that you can get early and ad-free episodes of this podcast available on Patreon.com slash Game Marks Pod. Johnny Clash, how are we doing, my friend? What's up? I'm doing pretty good. Um... I'm here. I'm finally playing one of my favorite games ever in wrestling, I guess we could say. A game I put a lot of time in, a lot of effort. Uh, Even as an adult, I'm not sure your experience with this game, but we will talk about it as we play. Zero. Zero. Okay, great. So I can't wait for you to give your take on it. I'm happy. I'm ready to go. We had a banger, bang banger, as you said last week. (sighs) You made me say it. (laughs) We played the video game history of Mick Foley. It was awesome. It's getting a great reception. If you haven't checked it out yet, head head on over to not only Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Head on over to YouTube. YouTube, Watch the video. There are visuals on the screen. We show you every incarnation of Mick Foley right there. We break them down. We pick them apart. We tell you our favorites. We tell you which ones we hate. It's a great episode. I liked it. I enjoyed it. But... Let's get into it, John. Last week, what you know, we talked about the video game history of Mick Foley. Were you inspired to go back and play any of the games that he appeared in? What have you been playing over the last week? What have I been playing? I mean, Little. obviously, uh, yeah, obviously a lot of Marvel Snap. That's that's our thing. Now we're going to play a lot of that. I didn't necessarily go back and play a game that Mick Foley was in as much as I looked more into like WWE 12 and stuff because. Just the artwork surrounding it and the like graphics and media that they had leading up to the game, like it was all just so on point. It was just beautiful. I, I would I, love to be able to ask him one. Qu- I mean, obviously, there's like a million questions that I would want to ask, but I would love to know the conversation that went into the ending video at no at the end of No Mercy. Where it's just him walking down the hallway, and it's just thank you very much. Like I wonder oh. why that happened. What prompted that? If they were just like, "Hey, we've got this funny idea. Would you mind just recording this voice line?" Why is a truck driver about to hit Sting in revenge? You know, it's, they they do. And why things. is it kind of Meng? <laughs> <laughs> they do things to pop themselves. I don't know, but I haven't really been playing much, so I'm looking to get back into some NHL. Get ready for that World Championship. I'm going to get demolished in, and <laughs> that's really about it. Um, if you're listening to this on Monday, yesterday, yesterday, Sunday was Game Marks Mania, where we raise even more money. For St. Jude, this is kind of like our send-off, our main event, our little cap to Gamebury every year. So we don't have the final numbers because as of recording, we don't have this yet. But next week, we will talk all about it. We'll tell you about the games we played, how George's computer will probably break. And we'll uh, yeah, we'll fill I you all in. I wanted to get mad at you, but... <laughs> but... But the track record. Yeah. But we also have a contest going on right now where all you have to do is leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, screenshot it, and send it to us on Twitter at GameMarksPod, and you can win an Elite 94 Edge, courtesy beautiful. of Zavi. It's the beautiful Edge figure in the white gear from WrestleMania. And, uh, I wish I could enter this one myself, but uh, I'll, I'll let you guys have it. 
<laughs> uh, all right, but listen, I know that you've been waiting, uh, let's say, about 178 episodes for this. <laughs> Uh, here we go, John. Are you ready to take the plunge into a game that you have been clamoring for since we started this podcast? Are you ready to take the deep dive into TNA Impact? And the deep dive, of course, brought to you by Zavi. I'm ready to cross the line. Hey, George. You see this light here that says Game Over that I point to at the end of every single episode like Ronda Rousey pointing to that WrestleMania sign? I do. Do you know where I got it? Uh, why don't you tell me? I got it from Zavi. That's us.zavi.com. Z-A-V-V-I. And they literally have everything. I have spent hours on this website looking up Mandalorian, Jurassic Park, Harry Potter, like everything you could imagine. There's Legos, Power Rangers. You could pre-order the new Marvel Legends. It's an insane website that has literally everything pop culture. There's even Batman shoes on here. I mean, I know for me... Uh, a little like adult Zen garden project that I like to do is like the smaller Lego sets and Zavi has a lot of those Lego sets on there and getting kind of itchy so if you like all things pop culture like John said Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, Harry Potter, Nintendo they're even getting into the wrestling game now oh, yeah. Zavi is the place for you that's right use code game marks simply just Game marks at checkout and you can get 10% off. I'm going to redo my wardrobe. This is Alex Shelley, one half of the Motor City Machine Guns, and you're listening to the Game Marks podcast. I wish we had the TNA announcer here. From Orlando, Florida, <laughs> it's the Game Marks Podcast. They used him recently for like Slammiversary or something. It was awesome. <laughs> but hey, we got to say, before we even dive into this episode, rest in peace to the legend, the commentary god. He was just great dude. Don West. You don't hear a bad story about him. Everybody loved him. I told you my Don West story. I'm going to say it right here. I was coming back from Impact once because I used to torture my family and make them wait three hours in line at Universal to, to go see Jeff Hardy, who would be out there for literally three seconds and come back in <laughs> multiple times. So me and my dad went back the second night. We were in Impact, and we decided to get gas on the way home. And I'm like looking down. I'm not really paying attention. My dad's getting gas. I look up at the pump next to me. It's Mike Tanay and Don West. And I'm like, oh my god! Like now, I'm kind of like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. So like, what can I? I'm not gonna get out of the car and like bombard them. Mike Tenay's pumping the gas. Don's in the passenger seat. You know, Tenay used to wear like the tuxedo, so like the tie was hanging and all that. Um, I somehow got their attention. I don't know what I did if I like knocked on the window or something. But Don like looked over at me, like, what does this kid want? <laughs> and I'm obviously wearing my new TNA shirt and I like hold it up to the window like a maniac and there he was just smiling gives me a big thumbs up and that was it carry on my way oh, so I was like man. you know like I might not remember what happened on that show but uh, that's the one piece that I took away from that TNA impact taping hey, so it was that's really a cool. good memory yeah so rest in peace Don George tell me about this game all right so TNA impact release September 9th 2008 for the PlayStation 3 Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 2 and on September 16th 2008 for the Nintendo Wii published by Midway games developed by Midway Studios Los Angeles and there is some stiff competition here in 2008 because the only game that this game had to go up against is Smackdown vs Raw 2009 I let me correct myself the only wrestling game. That, uh, oh, that's it. It's just these was, two games. Yeah, yeah, the only <laughs> games that released in 2008. TNA Impact, SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. Imagine. Uh, which, I gotta say, that's your Coke and Pepsi lineup of 2008 for wrestling, man. You got a TNA game and you've got a uh, WWE game. It's, it's That's really it. it. It's not, and not a whole lot else going on. <laughs> Yeah, and we've mentioned it many times. We've mentioned the Mick Foley episode. You're not getting many TNA games at all. We played here the TNA mobile game, which was a, it was a cool one. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think we got you one more it. still. We still got two more, actually. 
There cool. are two more mobile games that we have to play. A DS oh, game we still and have... a mobile. Oh, uh, what's across the line? It's PSP, right? PSP and DS. Oh. So while there Which isn't did much... you play? Neither. I didn't. I played this oh. one. <laughs> I, okay. I played this okay. one. But anyway, we're going to get into numbers, logistics, and all that later. But I think the main part of this, leading up to it, not only were we just eagerly waiting i remember texting my friends about it because i did actually have wrestling friends that enjoyed tna just as much as me it was my bread and butter here it was like all i was watching and the screenshots for this game as they would come out slowly beautiful like they looked nothing like what you were used to in a wwe game they gave you some hope that this game was going to be just so good. It was awesome. They looked so lifelike. You'll see our playthrough. We played on the PS2, and they looked great. But when you get to the 360 and the PS3, uh, this is done on Unreal. So this is it's Unreal, what they actually looked like. So it's pretty cool. You know, how are they going to put a six-sided ring in a video game? It's because we've never seen it before in a wrestling game. Obviously, they can do it, and they did it. But not only that, they put an ultimate X in here. I think we got way more than we thought for the first game. I got to tell you, I did not know how the six-sided ring was going to be. I thought it was going to be pure chaos. I thought for a split second, I was like, oh, God, I hope they don't just have it on like a grid system where you have to. It's essentially free run where you could just run around like the same way that you could in the SmackDown versus Raw games or, you know, the 2K games now. But if you came close to the ropes... You know, you collided with them the right. same way that you you hit the ropes uh, according to the corner, and you bounce off uh, in the right trajectory. Well, I we don't, played Triple A too. That also had a six sided ring. It was. Well, I think it was true. a little bigger though. Yeah this this feels feels authentic. I, don't, I, don't, I would say like, like, it's like not intentional. Oversized. Like it doesn't feel comically large. Like you're like, oh, this is big enough for you to do stuff, but it's not like. All right, well, I ran to the other side of the ring, or I did an Irish whip, now i got to wait four seconds for the person to come back to me. Like, yeah. it's big enough where you feel like you have freedom and you're not on top of each other the entire time while you're playing, especially in, you know, matches where there's the ultimate X. Like, that already is chaotic in itself, and you're hitting and, and colliding with people and you don't intend to. But this ring, they did the six-sided ring well in a sense that it, it, it's accurate size for the wrestlers and, and what's happening in, in it. Yeah, now let's read the description here. Enter the famed six-sided ring and experience the adrenaline pump in action, the drama and style of the top-rated TV show on Spike. Spike. Now, less submissions, less... You're not really being, like, mechanical in this game. You're not, like, stalking your opponent and picking their leg apart. You're hitting moves. This is very arcadey. It's a midway game. This is what you expect it to be. When you go into this game and there's trailers for other games, you're getting NBA Ballers Chosen One, <laughs> which I play and it was a great game. I love the NBA, NBA Baller series. So that's what kind of game you're getting. Like you're used to like flames and, <laughs> and stuff all over. But here's the kicker this game could have been made, TNA had the options of Electronic Arts. And Rockstar Games. What would a Rockstar wrestling game look like? I don't in know. In 2008. But in two, in two, this game took three years to come out because in 2005 is when they signed a multi-year agreement with Midway. And boy, did that bite them in the ass because which one of those companies is not still around? It's the one they went with. <sighs> which is unfortunate. Very unfortunate. A lot of I still wonder midway games out there. Why in 2023 Impact has not had a game? <sighs> what would like, it be? No, you know, like nothing. Not a GM game for your phone. Not a handheld for like the DS. Just nothing. Well, games are expensive to make, and that's not really Impact took upon the role of being the indies of tv i know everyone says like AEW is the indies of tv but no impact works with independent promotions they film at independent promotions not necessarily everyone on their roster is even contracted so you might bring a guy in for like four or five episodes film them all at once and they're on their yonder now i remember there was something 
I think with the wrestling code where Impact stars were in it, and they maybe were going to... We either talked about this, I'm not sure if it was real, where they were going to use like the Impact Arena and such, but everything got pulled, which made everyone think maybe there is going to be another Impact game, but we never saw it. Now, okay, I feel like now if they're going to develop a game... It's not going to be by EA or Rockstar or anything like of that caliber. It's going to be like it. <laughs> it's going to be like a virtual basement or something, and it's going to take years. The roster is yeah. going to be outdated, so I don't. I get why they haven't. Listen, they just got figures and cards again after how many years? Let them slowly work their way back up to making cool stuff. I love Impact. Always will. Always have. I don't care what people say about it. This game is just. It's just iconic and. I yeah, I love it. There's that much I could say about it. I wish that I could We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Let's get into it. Supports up to 4 players at a time on console. It has online support which includes tournaments and of course one-on-ones. Not really much to do. We're going to get into the DLC in a bit when we read the roster. Um the gameplay. So pretty button mashy. L1 is pretty much or whatever console you're on. I think it's L1, yeah, it's, L1 right? is unanimous. LB, whatever. LB, yeah. It's pretty much your modifier. So you're doing either L1 Y or triangle for a grapple. What a journey L1, to get there. Yeah. L1 circle to climb and do the ultimate X stuff. So that's really what it is. Everything else is very mashy. It's easy to reverse moves. I think the coolest part was the reversals of the moves. They come out of nowhere. They're cool like Hurricane Rana's and corkscrews and whatnot everything is so well planned i just think they could have used more more moves in the game there's not many it that's gets my very big complaint yeah but it is so like me and you played it was very fast paced because we do this all the time we know how yeah. each other play we yeah. both can button mash the hell out of this game but when you play a computer it might take you two or three times to get a finisher to actually put them away and executing the finisher is no small feat either. No. It also is quite of a quite a daunting task to get that to work as well. Uh, you'll you watch the playthrough on our YouTube channel. Uh, John hits a Styles Clash and makes it look relatively easy, but that's because <laughs> he is uh, well versed in this game. But uh, the the button combination is not what you would expect it to be. I believe it's L one and then uh, and Y or triangle. And, yeah, depending from on... the ground because you have to pick them up into a strong grapple. Yeah, I think you could do it standing. It just wasn't working for me. And then you just press B once you're in it. It's... So it's a little confusing, a little hard, a little because you have to get it either front grapple, back grapple. It's not easy. But to get to the finisher, that's the cool part because you have a meter on top that says impact. And once here we go, the midway flames. Once the midway flames fill up, you have your finisher. It stays for a little bit and then it slowly depletes. So you have all that time before you could hit your finisher. Now, there's also another meter in the hood, and that's, I guess, your stamina bar underneath it. When that fills up and you get hit with a move, that's when you're groggy and you get kind of dazed. And all it takes is for you to kind of wiggle the joysticks like a maniac for you to... But it doesn't tell you what joystick. So it's both. It's one or the other. It's 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 just... You have to just kind of take them both and just... Kick the crap out of the joysticks. That's the same way you're also kicking out of pins. <laughs> which, oh, God. If it catches you off guard, which I think it did to you... Then yeah, I was not. Yeah. There's also a submission minigame, which is very similar as well. But like we said, you're not really hitting many submissions in this game. It's very, very quick. But your game modes here. Singles, tag, fatal four-way, ultimate X, submission, falls count anywhere. But then you also have a story mode that I'm going to break down in a little bit. And you could also get classic TNA highlight matches and some extras where you're getting kind of like the trailer, trailer for this game, trailer for a new game, and just like little interviews and such. I got to say, I am glad that this game is not like the Hogan era of TNA. Because I feel like... You would have got Joker's thing, though. I don't care. I feel like when... That all went down. They tried being WWE light. They changed the ring. They changed the colors. No, they when I the think stage. of TNA, and I feel like when a lot of people think of TNA, this is the TNA that they think of. This That's roster, this ring, like these matches, like this is what right. for a lot you of go, people. What year did this come out? 2008? You go to 2012 when Hogan and Bischoff are running in again. 
it they tried to make it they tried to make it compete with raw like what are you doing yeah. i feel like it would have been a completely different game they would have tried to like carbon copy it to like a smackdown versus raw and it just would have fell flat on its face yeah i agree with you on that i just very happy with what we got and and we'll talk about the roster in in a little bit but you know for 2008 i guess we could also say um 2005 but this is the roster like or like at the height of its popularity these are the names that you associate with TNA so i think in terms of who is in the game there's really not i don't know you you would know better than i would but i don't really think that there's anyone missing from this era like all of the heavy hitters are there pretty much i'm sure if we really break it down we could pick out a few Jeff Hardy's not here. I think he might have went back to WWE at this point or somewhere in between. Um, I'm not really a fan of like Kevin Nash wrestling in a polo shirt and jeans. Okay. But, uh, All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. But let's talk about the, the lasting uh, most memorable part of this game, which is the story mode. Because this is where you get suicide. This is not only where you get suicide. This is where you unlock majority of the roster, which is pretty cool. Yes. We always say we like that. We don't need to start with a big base roster. Give us something to do. Give us something to keep playing the game. So pretty much your character starts. You're a wrestler named Suicide, who you know from TV. Suicide, Manic. I think it's back to Suicide now. I'm not sure. But during <laughs> the game, now in real life, they ran vignettes, who is suicide.com, and it would be on the screen in less than a second, and that would take you to a website that would tell you all about suicide in the game and that he's coming to television, actually, which was pretty cool. Now, I think most people know it was like Christopher Daniels. It was Frank it was like a, bu- yeah, a bunch of people played suicide. Then there was Sangriento, who was Amazing Red. There was a bunch that they tried. Let's see. I have Manic it up right here. CJP. <laughs> oh, read it. Cause it Frankie most- Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, uh, Kiyoshi. Uh, then you have TJP, Austin yep. Aries. Austin uh, Aries played suicide for Destination X. And use it to cash in for the belt. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Then uh, Jonathan Gresham and then uh, Caleb 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 Conley. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so pretty cool. Uh, And they all, you could almost tell by the move style of who they were, but I mean, everyone did a pretty damn good job. I'm sorry. There's more. In 2021, Taiji Ishimori portrayed under Manic, and then most recently, Ah, uh, we don't need to read the last one. Okay, we don't have to read it, sure. You can cut that out. Oh, <laughs> uh, nah. Um, okay, so the story mode. You gain a heavyweight title match. You're about to be on top of the world, win the TNA title, but LAX wants you to take a dive here. Now, LAX in this game is Homicide and Hernandez. Yeah. They want you to take a dive. You say no. They beat you senseless. They send you to Mexico. They just throw you down and leave you to die. But... You wake up, you're like, where am I? Which the voice they use here sounds like a way older person than should be portraying suicide, but that's okay. And you're getting your face reconstructed by two guys in like, in like uh, what's it called? Medical mask and medical gear. Yep. This is where you pick your creator wrestler, you make them, which is a pretty cool concept. I like it. But the guys doing the surgery are actually Don West and Mike Tenay, which is funny. <laughs> And uh, I didn't notice that when I first played this game way back then. I noticed this later. And uh, we did post a little tribute to Don, and it has his entrance and that scene in there from here, so you could check it out. Now, once you create your wrestler, you start wrestling on the Mexican circuit. You wrestle guys like El Grasso, Nightwolf, Fernandez. You go to the Armory. You wrestle Super Clowns and all that. Eventually, you get a foot-in-the-door match against James Storm, and this is where your career finally starts to take off. Now, we can't, we're can't. we not going to tell you everything that happens. I kind of want everyone to go either watch it on YouTube or play through it. It's just such a fun story. And it was something that people didn't really expect this game to have with such like an in-depth story and something that was like a lot of fun. Yeah, it got repetitive, whatever. But it's cool unlocking the arenas. You get taken under Kevin Nash's wing. And then I remember the last scene... 
you finally remember who you are in that championship match when you're about to win. You do the suicide pose and the finisher, and you're like, now I remember. And that's how the story ends. Everyone's like, oh, my God, it's been suicide the whole time. (laughs) One other thing I remember from this story mode was Jeff Jarrett was so freaking hard to beat. (laughs) It was impossible because you don't start with, like, your max moves and attributes and all that. You have to gain them. Jeff Jarrett is impossible. Now, I remember what I did was you could use the chairs outside the rings. Every match is no DQ. There's chairs everywhere. You could just use them. There's no count out. But the ring steps, when you ran past the ring steps, you trip on them. You go (laughs) flying. Like, you know the animation with the flying shoulder tackle when the guy goes flying? Yes. It's that animation. They just go flying backwards over the ring steps. So whenever Jeff Jarrett would start beating me up, I'd roll out of the ring. I'd just like, there was a little corner you could like tuck behind the ring steps and he'd come running after you, and he would just fall on his face, and that's where you get your chair shots in. Holy it was crap, like a that's trick. fantastic. Yeah. It was pretty All right, cool. well, uh, would you like me to take us through this roster? I would. I won't, yeah. All right, so your roster for TNA Impact is Abyss, AJ Styles, Alex Shelley, Booker T, Brother Devon, Brother Ray, Chris Saban, Christian Cage, Christopher Daniels, Curry Man, Don West, Eric Young, Hernandez, Homicide, James Storm, Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, Kevin Nash, Kurt Angle, Mike Tanay, Petey Williams, Rhino, Robert Rude, Samoa Joe, Scott Steiner, Senshi, Shark Boy, Sanjay Dutt, Sting, Suicide, and Tomko. The Game Marks Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming, providing precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. The Performance Package 4.0 has arrived, and oh man, is it a game-changer. It's the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. The Performance Package 4.0 comes with the Lawnmower 4.0, body hair trimmer, the weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, below the belt toner and deodorant, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. It's definitely holding all my goodies, if you know what I mean. Over 7 million men worldwide trust Manscaped with their grooming needs, and we've got an exclusive offer for all of the game marks out there. You can get 20% off your order and free worldwide shipping just by using the code GAMEMARKS at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tool for the job with Manscaped. Manscaped Manscaped.com and use code GAMEMARKS. You know what's missing from this game is uh, women wrestlers. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, TNA didn't have the knockouts division. I want to say it this time. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the only one you will see is the non-playable Christy Hemi in here. Yes, she's on every loading screen. No, uh, no and Queen apparently, Charmel. Uh, their Afro Thunder from Ready to Rumble 2 Boxing is also in yes. there as well. Which is awesome. That was always like a nice nice pop right there. And your arenas are the Orlando Impact Zone, the Armory, Freedom Center, Japan, England, Mexico, and Vegas. Yeah, all very themed arenas. Yeah. Now, I just looked it up, and the TNA knockouts didn't come to exist until 2007, which makes sense that they're not in here. I think other than that, there was... There was like a few women's matches, some valets and whatnot. They didn't really pick it up until a few years later. So that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Also, the lack of pay-per-view arenas was something people would talk about in this game because it's all just impact in Orlando. But you would get like England and Vegas, like that would be your pay-per-view in story mode. But there's no like Bound for Glory or Turning Point and all that. Yeah, that's what we wanted. Maybe win the big match at your big pay-per-view. I don't know. It's the same arena. All you got to do is change the ring skirts. But okay, the most I think one of the most iconic parts of this game, the cover. Yeah, Kurt Angle front and center, the Impact mouth guard, the fist in the air, Samoa Joe, Sting. But then in the background you have AJ Styles with the phenomenal forearm on Booker T. It is beautiful. You flip this baby to the back. 
you get even more. You got Christian Cage standing there. This is a nice back cover. We talk about some straightforward covers that suck. This one's awesome. I love you, this cover. We always say it's a great cover is when you know exactly what it is right from the get go, and that's exactly what this is. You very clearly see wrestlers on the front cover. You have the Impact logo. It says wrestling on it, <laughs> like the. It checks all the boxes here, and then you flip it over, and you go into the back. It's the same thing. You mm. have uh, this big, bold red test. Wrestling so real, you feel the pain. Enter the famed six-sided ring and experience the adrenaline-pumping action, the drama and style of the top-rated TV show on Spike. Uh, Do you see the bottom part here? Uh, exclusive TNA Impact trading card set inside. I don't remember ever getting that. I, I'm i sure I did because I obviously bought this game as soon as it came out. Well, go and find look, a sealed copy on yeah. eBay. Oh, that's... Hmm. 70 bucks. Hmm. I wonder what came in that. Like how many cards? I'm sure so, that you can find just the cards I, on Right here I have all eBay. my cards. I do have a lot of TNA cards also. So, interesting. I wonder if there's an autograph. I don't know. We'll find Ooh. it. Um, oh, wait. Here we go. TNA. 100% unlocked PS2. Oh, it's a memory card. <laughs> Damn. Very different. But okay, let's look here now at the European cover. I think this one's cool, too. It's not as nice. It's more bright. It looks like a little burst in the background with Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, and AJ Styles on the cover. Uh, I'm going to go with the American cover here as, yeah. as top dog because it's just beautiful. But the actual art style of the game, we talked about it before. We talk about it in our playthrough. The ring itself, the textures are so nice from the canvas to the metal to the ropes. But the players themselves, these are scans of the actual wrestlers in place of hand-painted textures. They include all the details like skin textures, scars, acne, sweat. Like everything's on there, like all the imperfections. It's so cool. The tattoos look legit. This reminds me back to like, I I know, it reminds me of Mayhem, when everyone was just spot on, even though it was like a crappy PS2 game. John, I need you to check out what I just sent you. Oh boy. It's important. TNA Impact Inaugural Edition Trading Card Pack. It's five cards, one. So what is this? It's it. I don't know if this is the <laughs> pack that came with it, but I typed in TNA Impact PS2 trading card set, and that came up. It's possible. So it, it doesn't says, say it anywhere. It's got the T- Impact logo, and it says, "Look for hand signed TNA autographs, TNA authentic action memorabilia cards." Should I it's, buy it right now? It says inaugural edition exclusive TNA wrestling card set, five licensed TNA trading cards per pack. Four dollars shipping. <laughs> Place order. <laughs> I'll get it in two days. Uh, Eight bucks two, for a vintage pack of cards, possible two, autograph. Hell yeah. Two thousand eight TNA impact inaugural cards pack. Oh, I two thousand eight, so it's possible. Gail Kim's on it. She deb- debuted in like oh seven, oh eight. And there's also a WCW 91 wrestling card pack for $4.50 if you'd like to get that as well. Hmm. No, I'm good. I actually, my friend's house in Pennsylvania, there's like a supermarket there, and those WCW cards are in the vending machine there still. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, I picked up <laughs> quite a bit last time I was there. That's, wow. <sighs> Now back to the game. Mocap was done by Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Sinshi, Sanjay Dutt, and Jeff Jarrett. And if any of those people would like to come onto the podcast <laughs> to talk about what it was like to do uh, motion capture for this or any other game, we would love to have them. George will pay you. I want to talk. I about, will try. <laughs> I want to talk about Ultimate X right now. This game was so much fun. We just played it. It's on our video on YouTube. It is complete and utter chaos. The computer player does not start by wrestling you. They go straight to the ropes and try to grab the X immediately. Immediately. It's like when we did the hacked 
uh, No Mercy four person cage match, and the <laughs> first thing won. that the people tried to do <laughs> were immediately get out of the cage. We're like, whoa, 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 whoa! There's a match happening. We got to have a match first. Yeah, it's just it's just complete chaos, complete craziness, and it's a lot of fun. You flip through the air when you get kicked off. You could do grapple moves to the person, spine buster them off. Oh God, I it's love the it. meanest looking spine buster. Whew. Yeah. So the entrances here are also something we should talk about because everyone kind of criticized them because they're very, I guess, cinematic looking, I would say. Yeah, I think they're great. They're perfect. I think perfect. it looks like it's television. I think it, I think it. it's very different from everything else that is available in wrestling games at the time, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. It, it just... It just adds like a little level of polish to the entrance. Like it's all these pre recorded things and Yeah, they're quick. I don't know. I, to the I point. liked it. Little FMVs, I guess you if you want to call them that. Like they're they're just like little video packages that play at the beginning of every match. It's I think what people got upset about is like the arena doesn't change with it. It's always the impact zone. There's no title belts anywhere in this game, so it's yeah, a little okay, eh. okay. But when you look at it, when you look at the entrance, it looks spot on from the impact entrance. The entire impact zone from the pay per view per- posters hanging on the wall to like the metal hanging from the ceiling, everything is it that's being in the impact zone right there. Yeah. Even backstage when you're in the story mode, it looks exactly like the TNA backstage from TV. Not, well, not much more you could say. Yeah. Now, I have a comparison here if you want to scroll down. Oh, I was just going to enter. I guess what I was going to say is kind of a segue into what you were going to say, which is just I wanted to talk about how pretty this freaking game is. <laughs> so talk about it. Let's go. Let's hear the the textures on the <laughs> on the body the the everything about we played the PS2 version and the face scans the texture mapping like down to the decals on the gear people's tattoos like everything is so detailed when you consider that this game came out in 2008 and we played the uh, uh, I don't know the seemingly lesser PS2 version Oh, the quality was great. Like, I was genuinely surprised and very impressed by just how everyone looked. Like, the intros that we just talked about, the entrances looked great. When you're actually in the match, yeah, things can get a little sharp. Not a, not a ton of, like, anti-aliasing to, like, smooth those rough edges. But, you know, we were playing on the PS2. It's a game that came out in 2008. I'll let that slide. But overall, presentation is is good. The one thing that I think is is the main glaring difference between the PS2 and the PlayStation 3 version is the crowd. I think the crowd mm. looks significantly better and the and this is not necessarily a critique because of the limitations of the hardware, but the lighting in yes. the ring for the PlayStation 3 version is significantly better. Uh but I mean, core gameplay is the same for for what it is. The the textures and and the models themselves look great. And now, uh, with that, I would love for you to bring up what I know that you're going to talk about, which, again, mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. So I have a picture here. I'll post this on social media of TNA Impact compared to WWE 12, not nine, the year this was out. It's Booker T from both. And then it is such a night and day difference on what they actually look like compared to each other. Uh, TNA completely blows it out of the water. And I'm looking at it here just to make sure that's actually the Booker T render from WWE 12. And it is. It very much is. Yeah, it's weird and it's cartoonish. Yeah. I think this was like his return, like his first game back to WWE games and all that, but it's brutal. They did Booker Dirty where he looks spot on, so cool in TNA Impact. He was one of my main guys I used to play with, him and I guess AJ and Sting. Uh, looks great. Looks great in the game. Looks, looks great, great in the entrance. The Again, like I said before, the details that went into everything is just, it's the level of detail that you would expect in a game from, you know, the last couple of years, not something that was in 2008, but every little details there, every single 
uh, color hit on Sanjay's uh, tights is there, and I think that he may have one of the more colorful ones in the game. I'm trying to think if anyone that we looked at and saw had more color. I mean, obviously... Yeah, uh, just Kurt and... Yeah. I was like, Curry Man's got, uh, you know, the, the sequin gold hat and all that stuff, but... Yeah, Kurt. Uh, Petey Williams has his... Uh, his, his singlet, little, his little Scott Steiner <laughs> singlet. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, also, George, did you know? Did you know this game sold 1.5 million units, but financial issues at Midway Games prevented the planned development and the release of the sequel. Did you know TNA Impact was the first professional wrestling video game in history to offer DLC? Did you know TNA Impact is on eBay from $2.99 used to $69 sealed? Not Damn. bad. Now, we mentioned this was the first pro wrestling game to have some DLC in it. The DLC you can get is Petey Williams and Curry Man, and you get Mike Tanay free with all of those. So that just means Don West was just in the game. Base character Don West. Um, was he? Was he on the roster that you read? Yeah. He was. Yeah. He was just he's just he there. Was just he's just a base character. I guess. I guess that just popped everyone. Yeah, let's put Don West in here. I if, think that's that's hilarious. We have that, Kevin see, Nash in a polo and jeans. Might as well put Don West in here. It's the good combination of the things that WCW used to do. And then you know, but with the graphics and the quality of this DNA, yeah. <laughs> this DNA game. <laughs> now, there's also apparently some issues with the DLC where Petey Williams would play like Senshi's video instead of his oh. own for the entrance. And there was hmm. something else with Curry Man, too. I'm not sure what, but uh, that was fixed right away. Okay. But regardless, we haven't had one of these in a while. It's time for some ratings and reviews. This is a big one. Now, Metacritic. Across the board, we got PS2 with a 58 out of 100, PS3 a 64, the Wii a 43, and the Xbox 360 a 62. There's always that PS3, Xbox difference. Eurogamer gives a 360 a 7 out of 10. Game Informer gives the PS3 a 6.5 out of 10, and the same for the Xbox 360. Game Pro gives the 360 a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Game Revolution with a C+. Game Spot gives a 7 out of 10 for the PS3 and 360 and a 6 out of 10 for the PS2. Game Spy gives a 3 out of 5 across the board for all of them. One of the only ones to read the Wii one as well. Game Trailers gives us a 6.6 out of 10 for PS3. Game Zone with a 6.5 out of 10 for the PS3 and 360. IGN with a 5.3 for the PS2, a 6.4 for the PS3, a 4.5 for the Wii, and the 6.7, 6.7 out of 10 for the 360. Nintendo Power rated their own, a 5 out of 10. They never did their games justice. <laughs> See, like Xbox Magazine, 7 out of 10 on the 360. That's great. PlayStation Magazine, 2.5 out of 5. <laughs> At least they're honest, right? 411 Mania with a 6.2 out of 10 and a 4 out of 5 out of 10 for the PS2. They have two ratings. The PS3 a 4.9 and the 360 a 6.9, which is very weird. And the AV Club with a C plus on the 360. Now to break it down, the game was praised for its realistic graphics and simple control scheme, but criticized for its limited and repetitive moveset, poor entrances, lack of championship belts, and inconsistent AI, which we could all agree with. We said it all already. Yeah. GameSpot wrote that the PS3 and 360 versions is no heavyweight champion, but this brawler still packs a satisfying punch. A yuck, a yuck. And the PS2 version, high impact action and lively animation save this brawler from mediocrity. A yuck, a yuck. And this game would be ported to Nintendo DS and PSP, as we said before, in August of 2010 under the name Impact Cross the Line, and it was published by South Peak Games who acquired the license after the collapse of Midway. You know, I think I think I had a lot of fun. I don't know how you felt about it, but I feel like I had a good time when uh, we did... Spilled hand- water all over myself. <laughs> when we did Handheld Month. 
You think we should bring handheld month back? Oh boy, uh, <laughs> maybe if we get desperate again. Maybe workshop that name so it doesn't sound uh, so inappropriate. Oh, <laughs> that sounds great. But George, it is now time. Once oh. again, we haven't had one of these in a while. Oh, look at the time, John. It's time to rate the game. The game. Right. I feel confident. I feel confident in, in, in doing this. John, would you like to 3 2 1 it? Oh, I didn't. I honestly wasn't sure if you were on board with me. I'm going to give my opinion afterwards, but I'm confident in a 3 2 1. 3 2 1. Play. The future, it no, I'm just kidding. Play it forever. I knew Whoa! you were going to do that. My God. Yeah, good. well, because that's what you do. Hey, you Siri, do it to play me. good Charlotte predictable. <laughs> It's only predictable because it's you. I just stole your finisher. Charlotte on Apple Music. <laughs> she actually did it, so I can, now we gotta listen to it. <laughs> uh, and here's what I will say about this game. I, feel it again, feel it. I don't want to get. I don't want to get YouTube copy stricken. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would like to let me let me just z- zoom in here. So I go. Ahead. I would like to praise the game for its realistic graphics and simple control <laughs> control scheme, but I would also like to criticize the game for its limited and repetitive move sets, poor entrances, lack of championship belts, and inconsistent AI. Uh, that is a completely original thought that I just came up with myself right now in this moment, and definitely didn't read it from the reviews that John read earlier. Uh, no, but that's that's really it. Uh, the game looks great. The presentation is amazing. You, all John and I did this entire episode was talk about how fantastic the presentation of the game was. Uh, the entrances were great. Hell, we didn't even talk about this. The menu is pretty. The menu Selecting is your matches, the character selection screen is great. It is simple. It's clean. It screams 2008, and I love every part of it. Entrance music behind it the whole time. It's great. Um, it's, it's everything that you expect from a wrestling game. I do really wish that not every person had a Death Valley driver and a drop <laughs> kick and uh, a shoulder tackle and the same like jumping clothesline and the same splash off the top rope. Uh, but, you know, I've never been, and I understand the necessity for it, never been a crazy uh, fanatic about people coming to the ring with belts. Um, mm. I understand it and I appreciate it when it's there, but it doesn't make a break the game for me because everything else about the entrances is so pretty that I'm like, oh yeah, I guess they should have their championship belt. But yeah, John, would love to hear your thoughts as you're the, uh, like I said earlier, the seasoned vet for this game. I just love it. I love everything about it. I get like giddy thinking about it. It's just one of those games that. I loved it at the time. I never was one of those people like shitting on it. Yeah, you could get championships. Like I said before, you could get like Bound for Glory and some different stages and whatnot. But were you really missing it? I, I didn't really care. I had so much fun with this. I constantly played it. I don't know if I ever really took it online. I, I'm trying to think back. I was probably on 360 at the time. And I don't know if. I always had terrible Wi-Fi in my parents' house. Okay. And I'm not sure if this... But I played Gears of War online, so that means I did have this online. Maybe I just didn't play it. Hmm. My... Hmm. I guess there was no point. It was just one-on-ones and tournaments. And I'm not a big tournament guy, so... I guess that makes sense. Now, but, were you... You had mentioned before that in in the past... Uh, in in like SmackDown vs Raw, you were a big versus online guy. Mm-hmm. What made this game not? Was it just not that time yet? You weren't there yet. Just in, repetitive. In your- you can't do different match types and whatnot. I also like when it keeps track and keeps score. Yeah, that makes it a little like NHL. It tells you your record, and some of the WWE games, some didn't though. So that means you're like, eh, what's the point of playing this? To have like gamer points, uh, I think I'm good. I'm not going to play it this year. So I like okay. having like a record. All right, all right. But yeah, that's our rating. Double piff, a double play forever. Oh, God. Put this game in the bag. I that. I know we will bring it up again and again and again. Maybe we'll play it on Game Marks Mania tomorrow. Just saying. Um, George, is that it? Are we ready to enter the soft lock? I think it is time for the soft lock, John. Let's go. All 
right, the soft lock, uh, we call it the question of the week, call it whatever you want, is a segment where John and I uh, take a topic from one of our mega marks in our Patreon, and we talk about debate, answer that question. Today, the question comes from none other than the owner of Best Batch Promotions, James Batchelder, also known as the Elder Spork, and he would like to know, what is your favorite winter-themed level... Mm. slash game area and i will be honest with you there was only one thing that came to mind and i know that it's not the best answer so i'm going to say this and then i'm going to really rack my brain because the only thing that came to mind was the slide level where you race the penguin in mario 64 (laughs) um okay yeah i know that's not the best so Um, first of all I did not only just miss my mouth with a few drops. <laughs> I look like a baby right now with water all over my sweat. I looked down like, holy shit, I really missed my mouth. Um, God. So what immediately came to my mind was the first, I know in the second it's prominent too, but the first The Last of Us, you have that entire oh, yeah, part of the, the game bunny. yeah, where you're going through the snow. Now, I know The Last of Us 2 starts in the snow and most of it is in the snow, but the first game, I feel like that was like... Like a tide changer, like that group yeah. comes after you and you're hiding from them. It's very like Walking Dead ish, and, and, and you're by yourself because that's when you're trying to get the medicine, right? I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's uh, it was a lot Ooh. of fun. Ooh, what you got? Shadow Moses in Metal Gear Solid One. Yeah, see, that's you. That's that's all you right there. Oh, Miles Morales. Oh, <laughs> that takes place at Christmas time in the snow and all that. We didn't even think of that. Yeah, One of my favorite games. Is it Shadow Moses? I don't know where you are, but Everybody. there's that. There's the there's the area in, in Metal Gear Solid, uh, the first one where it's snowy, and then I'm pretty sure you go back to Shadow Moses in Metal Gear Solid Four, and it's snowing, and that's that's pretty cool. Um, ooh, I'm I'm looking at a list. And some of these are games I've never played, and some of them are really cool. Um, <laughs> there's one thing that just says, every snowboarding game. And I'm like, yeah, no, that that checks out. Uh, every SSX game, 1080 snowboarding, <laughs> uh, 2 Extreme, 3 Extreme. <laughs> yeah, I guess those are... I mean, what about winter arenas in NHL? I guess those that, that works too. Or uh, the the uh, winter classic, that's outside yeah. and in the snow. <laughs> Literally what I just said. <laughs> Um. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hoth, I like any Hoth game uh, level in Star Wars games. I like this question. Um. Hey, if you want to ask a question, all you have to do is join our new and improved Patreon, where you get early ad-free episodes and you get to ask us questions on air. So it's pretty cool. Head on over, check it out. Is that it? You ready to tell me uh, what we're playing next week? Well, I feel like you should tell me what we're playing next week because you're the one that actually picked this one. All right, we're going back to the Sega Sega Saturn. That's why you picked it. And we are playing. Where you want to go is back it to Sega it? Saturn? I gotta check. I think it, it might be the Genesis. It's the Sega Saturn <laughs> and the arcade where we're playing Fire Pro Gaiden Blazing <laughs> Tornado. Can't wait to go back to the Sega. Now I don't know why I picked this, but I was looking around. It looked cool. I clicked it. It looks like Fire Pro, but in like Slam Master's world. So I thought we would enjoy it. All right. All right. We'll see. All right, guys. YouTube.com slash Game Marks Podcast for our weekly playthrough videos, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. GameMarksPod.com slash shop for our exclusive merchandise. ProWrestlingTees.com slash GameMarksPod for or shirt designs. Guys, I have like four shirts that I'm like in the middle of designing. I just need to put the finishing touches on them and they are going up. Oh. Patreon.com slash GameMarksPod for, like John said, this show early and ad free. And of course, at GameMarksPod on all forms of social media. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And if you would like to receive that edge figure... All you got to do is just leave us a five-star review and rating on Apple Podcasts. And if you also would like to do that on Spotify as well, that would be great. And if you have a product or service that you would like to advertise on this podcast, 
please reach out to us at gamemarkspod at gmail.com. Also, cheap plug for myself. Do uh, it. Going Postal is officially out. The first episode, the pilot episode. Uh, by the time of this recording, thanks to uh, the wonderful Johnny Clash for getting uh, me squared away with the things that I didn't know you had to do when you made a podcast because it's all the things that he did. Uh, that's available now wherever podcasts can be found. And uh, yeah, crazy, crazy adventure ahead of myself and Dylan. I'm sure at one point or another, Clash is going to be there. Uh, good old, uh, eh, it's not that podcast. We won't say the, we won't say what Dylan calls you. But uh, I think that's it. Johnny Clash, you could ring the bell again, do the thing, whatever you want to do. Game over, Marks. I'm going to bed. Ding. Game Marks Podcast, put them on the radar. Playing rare games, Sega Saturn, no game shard. Johnny and George work hard and they play hard. Future Endeavor games and put them in the graveyard. From the deep dive to the clash at the feast. How can I get more? That's question of the week. Follow on Twitch, there's nothing that they won't play. Game Marks Podcast every single Monday.